Well, welcome to the channel. Here we are. We are Dig the Games, and we are collaborating today. Have an interview with my brother, Josh, who has his own channel that's doing quite well. And I just want him to introduce briefly himself and a little bit about his channel and what his channel is all about. Josh? Hey, Jonathan. This is awesome. I appreciate the opportunity. This is a lot of fun, and I appreciate what you've done. We've gathered a lot of uh, game ideas from you and whatnot. Um, my name is Joshua Wells, and uh, I run a channel called Kids Ministry Tools, and uh, it's mostly geared towards ministries uh, that deal with kids, uh, from Sunday schools to you name it. And it's just a lot of fun, and the kids love it. We have uh, different ideas that we do for vacation Bible schools, uh, Sunday school programs, and a bunch of other things like that. But we also gear towards games as well, because you got to have games in Sunday school. So uh, it's always good to have that. Yep. And uh, John, yep. it's pretty fun. So um, just tell us why, you know, your drive and your mission and your passion, why you created the channel in the first place. Uh, mostly because of the void. There's, uh, you know, when you're looking for something online, uh, there's always tons of different ideas, but not always geared towards children, uh, as well as not always geared towards ministry. Right. And so back when COVID-19 happened, uh, there, were, there was a lot of folks not knowing what to do with their children's ministry, and there was a dearth, there was a, a big void. And so we started Kids Ministry Tools. Back then it was Kids Ministry 101. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, we it's faced through, a few changes we go along the way. Some changes, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, but when we started it, that was the main goal was to create an outlet uh, for children's ministry workers. Uh, not just games, but, uh, you know, Sunday school lesson ideas, object lesson ideas, all sorts of stuff like right. that to try and help uh, children's ministries. Right. But, yeah. And honestly, that's, you know, a lot of you already know why I created the channel because you're here in the first place. But originally when I created the channel, I I didn't even want a YouTube. I, my plate was full, had a lot of things going on with the ministry as it was. And then I saw my brother created a channel and my, you know, my interest level peaked because of the fact of how many people I could influence and help by creating a YouTube channel. Because being in the ministry, when you have a ministry, sometimes, especially if it's successful, you get phone calls, you'll get emails, you'll get text messages of people asking you questions. And I read a book one time on They Ask, You Answer, one of the most amazing books you could read when it comes to developing content from a business perspective or from a ministry perspective for other people. Basically, when there's a question, if you have the power, you answer it. And so many people, when it came to games and content like that, they were searching Pinterest, they're searching YouTube, they're searching the internet, and they're spending hours, just like you said, they're looking all over the place for these things. And so my ultimate reason of creating this channel was to provide an avenue, basically a catch-all for games. Originally, like you you changed your name channel, your, your channel name, I changed mine as well. It was the Dig Studios. It was basically created for the fact that, you know, whatever I dig, <laughs> I was going to post it from, you know, technology to ventriloquism, everything. And sure. all of a sudden, you know, a, a game blew up. We'll talk about that a little later. Um, but one of the games blew up and people started subscribing for games. So I changed the name to Dig the Games. And last week I soft launched um, all the other channels as their own individual channel. But yeah, just like you, you know, I, I saw a need. I wanted to fill that need, and it's already been a help to a lot of people. So here we are on the channel, and we're talking about games. So for you, uh, what would you say would be the purpose of even playing a game in your ministry? Why, why play a game at all? Okay, so the children's ministry obviously is preparing them for to be in a big church, right? There's no games in big church, you know, and I've been in a lot of churches, you've been in a lot of churches where uh, they even might would down such a thing. But yet, I believe a couple things. One, it creates diversity. Yeah. Uh, a kid's attention span is very short, okay? And the younger Adults they are, the sometimes. shorter it is. <laughs> very much so. And so, but to break up the service or to break up the Sunday school class, into segments. Okay. For instance, if a kid's attention span is five minutes long and you're right. teaching a lesson for 15 minutes, and if you don't throw something in there to divide that lesson out, you're going to lose those kids. Right. And one of the funnest things to interrupt with is a game, even if it's a simple review game of what you've learned so far. 
just something to, to break it up. Another reason is it makes the kids want to come back. Yep. I mean, it makes class fun. Yep. You don't want to be the teacher that's, you know, oh, I don't like that teacher, you know? You, you want to be the teacher not just so that they like you, of course, but you want to make it enjoyable, right? Right. One thing I like to say is if you're the student, you know, put yourself in the student's shoes. Put yourself in the class shoes. Are, are you enjoying you as a teacher, right? One of the ways to enjoy you as a teacher is games. Sure. And, uh, and what better to do than find an outlet uh, like, like Dig the Games where you can find extra games and it'd be a help to yeah. you. Yeah. I know it's been a help to us. Yeah. Well, the neat thing is, you know, because some of you may not know our history, but Josh and I are brothers and we traveled for probably five years in evangelism. We traveled five mm-hmm. years teaching kids. We did kids crusades. We did camps, vacation Bible schools. We did it all. And it was it was a big learning curve for us, but we had it down to such a science where we knew how long everything was going to be. And we even discovered sort of a, a key factor of how to do a big children's service and keep their attention because kids, like you said, you know, they're coming from a nonstop society where everything is nonstop. Sure. Everybody's impatient. Everybody wants something immediately and they want it right now. And with kids, when they're coming from the entertainment industry, from television to video gaming, they want it nonstop. And so if they come to a church service and it is not fun for them, and I understand we want to teach them truths and we want to have foundations, but they they want something to be fun. They, they want it to be exciting. And you want them to be excited right. about coming back, just like you said. And so, yeah, even, yeah, it's awesome. Having a game channel and the purpose of even having it you know, to help. I, I, I worked with teenagers for years as well. And I tell youth pastors all the time, I, I, I saw on a Facebook group one time and they said, we never play games. And I, I sort of frown on that because your teenagers, one of the things about games is like you said, it encourages them to come back. And as long as they're coming back, you're able to reach them. But if they never come back, you can't reach them. So why eliminate right. something that would cause them to come back. And so, yeah, I, I, I completely agree. You know, we, we need the game time and it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be long. You know, if you go right, through right. most of my games on the channel are shorts. And the reason I did that is yeah. because if you're a youth pastor or you're a children's worker or you're a teacher or whatever, or even you're about to head out with PE, you know, you're working with a school, you don't have much time to find a new game. And all of a sudden you're racking your brain. What was that game? Go watch one of the shorts and you've got an yeah. instant game that you can play for a while. So, yep. Yeah. For sure. So here we go next. And a lot of it's stuff you right yep. there, you know? Yep. It's right there. Let's so see. with your target audience, you're, you're not just after teachers and you're not just after, you know, kids, workers and things like that. Explain how your channel benefits everybody. And then I'll get into mine a little bit too. Sure, sure. Yeah, uh, Kids Ministry Tools, yeah, we, we batted back and forth on what the name should be. I mean, there's so many, so many children's videos out there um, for Christian kids, but right. not not that I would put my kids in front of, or not that I would put in front of my kids. So one, that's one of the main audiences is, is to allow an outlet sure. where a parent can sit down and say, here's my phone. You could watch sure. this and feel perfectly comfortable with knowing that we're not going to right. post something that, that would interfere with their child's mind and understanding. And then another outlet was for the, the adults. You know, as a Sunday school teacher, as a children's ministry worker, uh, I wanted it to be like a one-stop shop where they can come and get ideas, come and get um, help uh, and encouragement. Uh, you know, you've been in the children's ministry. You know what it's like to need encouragement, uh, you know. There's always at least one or two Bubba's that, you know, want to interrupt the whole thing uh, and they need prayer. But, you know, there's insights there. Uh, so mainly it's for children's ministries. But to be honest with you, we're helping people all over the world. Uh, I, I've received messages for over seven, from over 17 countries, uh, people that have been helped and getting ideas and whatnot. And to me, that, that's, that's awesome. It's reaching a span of things I, I, I just I would not have been able to do without this outlet. That's all right. You know, it's the same thing with my channel. I originally, you know, like I said, started it off as a big channel of a catch-all channel of everything that I dig. You know what I'm saying? And then it began to be, I noticed how different people were finding my channel. 
and they were searching for party games. So I thought, okay, yeah, you know, these could be used for parties. And then they were searching for family games and challenges. And I, yeah, these could be used for family games. And then before you know it, my channel just started growing and I realized that the reach and the possibilities was a lot more than just youth group games and children's ministry games and things like that. And so that's how my target art audience just, it just grew. It's, it's for a lot of people and everybody. Yes. So next, when you're talking about, you know, your games that you play with your ministry, what's your like process? How, how do you choose the game? Do you go through a process or you're just random? I mean, what do you do? Do you base it off your lesson? Sure. Yeah, actually, we've done that too. We've based it off of lessons. We've done it like that before too. But a uh, majority is I have a closet uh, that's huge and it's full of game supplies. I encourage every children's ministry to have some sort of stock. Okay, you got all the cups, you've got noodles, you've got balloons, you've got all sorts of stuff. And literally, sometimes I'll just go in there and go, okay, okay. What do I want to do? I mean, sometimes it's mind-boggling of, okay, yeah. what do I want to do? But on the same token, to be honest, my kids. My kids are one of my biggest ideas, uh, idea givers, especially Andrew. Hey, Dad, we should do this and let them try to do this. And and so a lot of my ideas actually right. come from the kids themselves. Uh, it's almost like with my bus promotions, you know, sure. <clears throat> this past Sunday, one of the girls says, we haven't done pickles. I'm like, we haven't done pickles. Uh, you know, and so we're having pickles next week, okay? But to feed off of them, it's almost like taking Fun. a poll, you know, what would you want to do? Uh, but still, and, and right. if they want to do it, boy, it makes the game even better. Uh, and so I, I do listen to feedback, and the kids actually love that. Uh, and you know, you know, there's sometimes you just can't yeah. do certain things, and that's understandable. But still, they love it. And then, uh, to be honest, I love Minute to Win It style games. So in the closet, there's tons of stuff a minute to win it i mean it only take a minute to win the game those are quick and easy uh and right that's basically where i get a lot of my game ideas from is the closet i mean i walk in there and they got i got tons of stuff in there and i just grab from it uh we have all sorts of orbies uh from small medium to large the kids love playing <laughs> with those uh there's just tons of different things in there and then uh now, recently, I have a young man, uh, his name is Luke, and he does a great job, and he assists me, and he's my game master. I hand him, that's his main job now is games. So he finds the Fun. game ideas, and that, that helps me out because I have a lot of other things going on. But uh, And he comes up with some good ones, and a lot of the times sure. it's because he asks the kids. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, one thing that actually helped me, because when I was working with teenagers, I challenged myself and I said, I am not going to play the same game, the same game every week. I'm going to play a different game every week. And I knew I was doing really good when one of the teenagers came up to me and they said this, they said, Hey, what game are we playing this week? That let me know that I was on the, re the right track because they were excited and they were anticipating and they were there to enjoy it. And so, yeah, the game is not everything. And most of the time, the games only last five minutes, maybe six minutes, because sure. we go too much longer than that, even for teenagers, not just kids. It gets a little boring. You know, it gets a little dull. And so it was a lot of fun when, when you reach that point. And it's like, I, I'm going to encourage myself just to have variety and to keep on going. So when it comes to games, though, in various settings, like classroom size or age group or different things like that share some tips on how you would modify a game based on that yeah so uh, sometimes like if you're in a very small space i understand you're, you're limited and you can't do these big games and you big ball volleyball becomes a balloon instead of a big ball uh you know it you almost have to adapt sure. your game to the room but at the same token you have to adapt the game to the kids like a big ball you may not want to right. do with five-year-olds, okay? That thing come crashing down on it and hurt them, you know? So you have to adapt the game sometimes as well for your age group. And, and I think that's common sense, but sometimes we don't think about that unless, you know, we are told. <laughs> but, yeah, honestly, though, it, it's... Right. Uh, I've had to teach classrooms with 50 kids. I've had to teach classrooms with five. Um, we've had audiences of 700 kids in our gym. And uh, so, you know, you adapt the game to the room. You adapt the game to the kids that are in the audience. I love games that keep everybody yep. involved, even if there's only a few playing. Uh, sure. And that's hard when there's a huge yep. audience. So you kind of got to adapt 
to that. One one key factor, I believe, in adapting a game uh, to, to the room size is a CTA, a call to action. When it calls everybody to do something in that game, I, I think that's a successful game. Sure, like a pass it up or, you know, different things like that. We've got yeah. lots of crowd games. I love crowd games. You know, we've done conferences through the years together as well, and it's 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 a lot of fun when everybody gets involved. I remember this one game where I I wrapped the youth workers um, with duct tape, and I faced the duct tape out, so the sticky side was out, and I gave everybody in the audience, you know, there's probably six, 700 yeah. people, right, total or whatever. I don't remember. But I gave everybody a straw, and I gave tons of Q-tips out, and their whole goal was just to spit those Q-tips out and make it stick to those youth workers. And we added it up and tallied it up and whatever was there at the end won. And I, I, I was at another conference one time and they did the same thing, something similar. They had the sticky side out and then they played pass it up. And with the pass it up, the item had to stick to the youth worker. So they had to run the item up there, stick it to the youth worker. And if it stuck to them for at least three seconds, then they counted it as a point. And then they hollered out, it was hilarious, they hollered out, a, a chicken. And people started looking around, and they threw live chickens into the audience. And the teenagers were running wow. everywhere trying to catch these chickens to run it up and stick it to the youth worker. But that 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 was exciting as well. So, yeah, talk about adapting for different sizes and conferences and locations. It's, it's a lot of fun being able to do that. I've had people message me on the channel, and they'll say things like, how can this game work for... And they'll say whatever the purpose is. And I think a lot of times the things that help with like my channel and your channel, it helps prompt people to right. be creative because we're being creative in what we do. And the Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. So the way we prompt each other into thinking creatively is by getting ideas from other people. And a lot of times you could take the same game and magnify it for a massive crowd and you can minimize it for a small classroom setting. You just have to think creatively and oh, think yeah. outside the box. And, you know, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun to do that. For sure. You know that too. Let's see here. Um, explain how, and you and I both know this, but it's good to, again, we're helping people out be creative. Explain how you would encourage everybody to participate. Yeah, sometimes you'll have that one or two that just don't want to do anything, uh, and they just they just right. don't. And I I love to make it to where yeah I'm not going to force anybody to have fun, but it is it is good sure. to see when they come out of their shell and enjoy it. I don't play any games that I personally wouldn't do myself. Yeah, if I wouldn't do it, of course. Then again, sometimes that's a little dangerous. But anyway, but if I wouldn't do it, um, I'm not going to ask a kid to do it, right? Another thing is I like to test the games before class, right? If it, if I can't do it, if it's not something I can't accomplish myself, right? or if it's going to take too long to accomplish, I mean, there's plenty of stories on that. I mean, I, I was watching a live stream of a youth conference, and they spent 25 minutes of the service trying to accomplish this one event, this one game, and it never got accomplished. And so, you know... Well, there should have been probably some adapting there. Uh, and so that thought came to my mind of, yeah. well, sometimes you have to decide on on the spare of the moment, uh, we're going to change this up a little bit so this would actually work. And you got to right. make it enjoyable. Nobody wants to right. sit there for uh, really any amount of time and watch somebody yep. finally be successful at something. Uh, and so one way yeah. to get everybody involved is to make it achievable. Make it achievable. If it's not something yeah. that I can accomplish, not something they can accomplish... It's like, you know, you see all these guys on YouTube and whatnot that do all these trick shots and stuff like that. And that's not really a good game idea because it sometimes they're honest. They'll show, that's, this took five hours. This took 28 hours, you know. Uh, yeah. That's not time for service, okay? Uh, but anyhow, make it right. accomplishable. Uh, and then another thing to get everybody involved is, like you said, those crowd games. But honestly, I like for cheer, Right. And so maybe there's only five or six kids that are able to play. So then we throw out, okay, whoever cheers, whichever side cheers the best or, you know, roots for that person the best, boom, that included everybody and it gets everybody else involved. 
my my goal when I'm leading any sort of group is to be the person that motivates people to do it. Because a lot of it starts with the leader too. Like imagine if you got up and you were dead and you weren't excited about any yeah. part of it. Okay. And then you train your workers to get excited as well. And it's amazing how we, we used to teach you and I, we used to teach this as well. You want them to get so excited about a candy that they're excited just sure. about opening the wrapper. Like get, get them so excited about the contents that they're even excited about the wrapper. <laughs> It's like a kid on, on Christmas, you know, what do they end up playing with a lot of times or staring at or reading, even though the object is inside the box, they play with the box, they play with the wrapping paper. Uh, and a lot of that comes from the fact of how much it was built up. It was there under the tree, you know, or whatever. And the kid got excited, you know, the momentum built up. And so what do they end up playing with? The thing that was there, you know, yeah. forever for them to see. And so it, it's fun. It's a lot of fun to try and get somebody involved and engaged. And like you said, yeah, not everybody will. And I never make, and you, you do this the same, I never make a big deal of those that don't get involved because of the fact it's a game. Right. I make a big deal about the teaching and the preaching time and the lesson time. I make a big deal about that, a big deal about listening. But when it comes to a game, I don't make a big deal about that because, you know, I, I want people to get involved and get excited and play the game. But if they're just going to sit there, I actually don't like, you know, get on to sure, them or sure. point them out or something like that because it's done and over real quick and it's gone. And but my goal is for me to be excited. Sometimes we do a workers round and the kids love it. Oh, you yep. get the workers versus yep. the workers. Yep. <laughs> my channel now, a lot of times. I had to convince my wife, Heather, to get on the channel. And so finally I've convinced her and uh, we're doing some games against each other too. It's a lot of fun uh, doing the workers against each other. Husbands and wives duos are the best because especially if you've got girls versus guys and it's not actually a team name, you're actually girls versus guys, then the wife is for the girls and the husband's for the guys. And that's, it's a natural, yep. you know what I'm saying? It's a natural competition. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. All right, here we go. Back to this. So future plans, you know, any content teasers about the channel? You say, well, you know, here, here's, here's, here's something, you know, now if you don't, you don't want to tease anything, <laughs> any, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that That's fine. If you, you, you just want to say, just subscribe to my channel anyways, and what happens happens, that that's totally fine. But if you have anything that you're, you're like, hey, here's something we're shooting for, or something like that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so one of the things we're hoping to get into is a lot more animations. Um, there's a there's a tons of cartoons out there, and they seem to stray away from the sure. Word of God. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to say that, you know, we're yep. going to do it the best or anything like that, but I'd like to stay as close to God's Word as we can. Um, and so little sure. things, too. Like, how often do we see David and Goliath drawn where David has the staff in his hand when he's going up to Goliath, where the Bible specifically said that. It specifically said he went with the staff in his sure. hand. And I'm not trying to be nitpicky on that, but on the same token, if a kid's sitting there reading the story along with the story that is being shown, uh, it gives a better picture of that. And so, you know, a little bit more of sure. a, a realistic but yet cartoon to the story, right? Uh, not so much of reading right. between the lines, yeah. um, but you know what I mean. That's one goal that right. we'd really like to get into. Ever since yeah. I was a kid, uh, I've wanted to do animations for our channel, and or not necessarily a channel, but Cartoon. cartoons for the to help boys and girls to see what the Bible was like. Yeah. Uh, but in, on other things, though, I mean, yeah. we're going to keep on going with what we've got with the object lessons and the Sunday school lessons and different ideas for children's ministries. We're just going to keep on. There's so much more. Uh, I've got two books that I'm almost done. I've got about about 14 hours for one and about 20 That's hours awesome. left on the other one, uh, and they'll be published soon. Uh, looking forward to that being done. But yeah, hey, it's pretty neat stuff. That's and, awesome. And uh, I'm, I'm proud of our 
folks that have given me ideas as well. I, I steal ideas from all over. I mean, you know, yep. we don't call it steal. We call it ministry. Yep. Uh, but you, know, you get ministry ideas from sharing. Yeah, sharing. from all over. It's sharing. Well, even YouTube does that. What do they do that if you're using somebody yeah. else's, they share. Yeah. They share. It's, it's sharing. That's a Christian word. It is. You know, it's biblical. It and, and then you make it adapt it to is. you because <laughs> the way I do it won't work for you. Nine yep. times out of ten, it won't work for you. But, you know, you yep. adapt it to you and make it work. Yep. yep. I had a guy um, where, it, like right now, here at this point of life, if you type in party games on YouTube, the top five videos, three of them are ours from our channel on mm-hmm shorts not long form content but the shorts and i had a guy who tried our top video which is called the cuphead challenge the guy tried it with his group he said well this did not work for our group and i was just like yeah it sure. doesn't work for everybody it really sure. doesn't it it worked for almost 700,000 other people but it didn't work for you i understand that you know and it, yeah it it doesn't work for everybody but as far as, you know, teasing the future, um, you and I both know I've always had big, my ambitions are a lot larger because, I mean, we serve a big God and I don't, I don't believe anybody can out dream or out vision what God has. And so I actually think, uh, for our game channel, we're going to add things like we're going to add board games to it. I'm trying to stay away from video games and things like that, digital games, because I want to do things that people can actually turn around and incorporate into their family, into their event or their party, into their church ministry, into their classroom or whatever. That way they can go and just have that and use it. So we'll be integrating board games. And there's actually a lot of history <laughs> to games. You know, where did that game come from? And it's a, it's very interesting stuff in some of these game situations. So I, I'll be doing that as well. And some extreme games. I, I want to almost call them Texas size games where they're like larger than life. I think that would be a lot of fun. Now, that that's to come. That is to come. So stick around, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And you know as well as I know, um, because I split all the channels up, last week I soft launched a bunch of channels. And if you, if you want to see those, just go to our YouTube and click on channels and you'll see all of the ones that I've started there's not a lot of content yet, but it's coming. It will be there. And, you know, go subscribe to Kids Ministry Tools with my brother Josh. Go subscribe to Dig the Games, this channel here. And I'd like to encourage everybody to participate in the channel. Um, I know my brother Josh, he, all the time he's getting participation. People give ideas. Give us ideas. You know, I I had a guy ask me the other day, he said, hey, do you have any baseball themed games? I said, coming up, coming right up, and I will give you the games and we give it away for free. Just watch the channel and you get a bunch of ideas. So any last words, Josh? Yeah, uh, stay encouraged. Keep it up. I mean, you know, you might try a game and it fail, fall flat on your face. Um, Don't be afraid to stop a game when it's not working. You know, Uh, it's just just know that that's not going to work. Okay. Yeah. Uh, swallow the pride. Just do something else. Uh, it, it's okay. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it, games are awesome. And I believe they do add a lot to any service. Uh, it's, it's fun for all, all ages. Uh, we, when we do family night services, uh, we throw some games in there and, and the whole family loves it, especially when we put families versus families. It's, yeah, it's fun to see. It's fun to see. You know, what before I go, one of one of the things I was thinking about, um, I had games one time where where they had to accomplish a goal, and I could see mm. that the goal was not getting accomplished to win the game. So I changed it timed, and I said, "Okay, whoever is the closest in ten seconds." And what I did is I added that momentum back to the game where they're like, oh, "We got to get this done," and at the same time, yeah. it allowed something achievable. You know, maybe their goal was to do ten, but no. Only, you know, they had only done one, you know, whoever got the closest in the next 10 seconds. So that's an idea too. And, you know, we could talk forever about stuff like that, but you know, this has been fun. This has been fun. We'll have to do this again. And I've, I've actually had some people suggest that we do some live streams and I think that would be fun. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I need to do a little bit more with a, with a studio atmosphere and all of that, but you know, doing what we can with what we got. So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thanks for having me. 
Sure. Not a problem. Thanks for joining.